Hey, hello everybody around the world. Uh, welcome to this week's live stream for the Raspberry Pi Foundation's Digital Making at Home project. Um, this week our theme is looking after yourself. And so I'm here with Jimmy, uh, who you might recognize from the uh, Mindful Meadow project that we released this week, where you can sort of create a really nice calm space for yourself to get some chill time and just relax and like may have some nice soothing noises and do all that sort of stuff. We're trying to get that anxiety down because we know that everyone's a little bit stressed at the moment uh, as we're all sort of stuck at home and we can't really be together out in the nice wilds with everybody else we would like to be. So we can create that at home in our own sort of private spaces. Um, and we'll be extending the Mindful Meadow project today. So if you haven't done the Mindful Meadow yet, you can get hold of the finished product at uh, rpf.io slash dm-meadow-x because we're extending, so that's the extension on there. And that's what we're going to be working from today. So if you follow the link that's on the screen right now, it will take you through to scratch and you can just remix the project from the position that we're about to kick off with today. So uh, how's it going, Jimmy? You right, mate? I'm good, you? Yeah, not too bad, mate. You ready to do some coding for all the folks at home? Awesome, man. Cool. So um, let's load up the Mindful Meadow project that we had before at the extension so we can get that one there. And you can see that Jimmy's got the Meadow Complete project open. You just click Remix. And we can see that it's got some code that's already in there. Zooming in. Well done, buddy, so that everyone can see it. Um, and that there, that's the finished Mindful Meadow that we released uh, this week at Digital Making at Home. So once you've done the first project, you can kick on from your own one in case you sort of customized it or personalized a little. But if you haven't, like I say, load up this project here and we're about to start coding off of that one. So the Mindful Meadow, and if you want to run it for everyone, Jim, just so they can see what it does. Um, if they haven't built it yet, you can run the project here. You've got a little slider that chooses how many flowers and you click the green flag. It produces a whole bunch of flowers with the number you choose in random colors, in random assortment, but always on the sort of the grassy part of our backdrop. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to add a few extra things to the meadow. We're going to add like a flying bird and maybe a butterfly and some extra sound effects just so that you can sort of tweak it a little and have a few bit different things coming through so it's not always the same thing once you get it going. So um, the first thing we'll do, Jim, I reckon is if we add a bird or something that can fly backwards and forwards, um, we just need to add a new sprite for something like that. So it can be whatever you want, mate. Um, you know, just pick something you like. There's like bats and birds and a few different things on there. But, yeah, help yourself to whatever you want. So I'll try and find the parrot. Yeah, the parrot's a good shout, I reckon. Awesome. So he's a bit, yeah. he's a bit massive at the minute. You might want to shrink him down just a little. Nice one. Cool. So you can see that Jimmy's changed the size of his sprite by adjusting that underneath the workspace there, or sorry, under the stage. Um, but you can do that in a bunch of ways. We're keeping it really simple today so that we can move forward. And so that's our parrot. And what we want to do is if you go back to your flowers, Jim, on the main script there, we're going to add a broadcast to it. So you can see in our main script up there, once we click the green flag, uh, we want to have a few broadcasts there as we go on. We're going to add to our green flag script because using the universal trigger for all of those things, that's the best way to make sure they happen all at the same time or exactly when you want them. So bang a broadcast in there at the end of your when green flag script clicked. All right, so I'm going to go over to the control panel. And right at the bottom, I'm going to find, no, I'm going to go right over to the events panel. And at the bottom, I'm going to find broadcast message one. Perfect. If I click on message one, I can type in a new message. And I'll just name this one parrot. Nice one. Good, sensible name for your broadcast, man. So when we come back to it, we can understand what that code was and what we meant it to do when we started off. So that's brilliant. So now that we've got that broadcast on our green flag script, it means that whenever we start the new thing, it's going to do exactly what we want it to do with our, our parrot script. So it will produce all of our flowers and then it will run our parrot script. If you wanted to put that in a different order in your own project, you can do that. You can put it right at the top if you want so that the parrot happens before the flowers generate. But it's whatever you guys want to do at home is totally cool. So flick across to the parrot now, mate, and we'll start adding some code. So since this is running from a broadcast, we want the when I receive the parrot broadcast for this guy. So he'll kick off once he hears that the, the shout from our green script to go. So he's right in that sign. Awesome. And then so once our parrot comes on, once he receives that broadcast and he's into our screen, we want him to do the next thing he's about to do forever. So we want a forever repeat block just to make sure that our parrot is always going through the motions that we set up for him now. 
Brill. And so we've got our parent script, we've got our forever loop, so we know it's going to be carrying on no matter what we do from here. And so let's have the first thing we want to do is make sure that uh, it goes to the right place on our screen. So if you grab him and just slide him all the way across to the left, uh, grab him by the very rightmost end of the sprite, perfect. And that means you'll be able to get as much of him off the screen as possible. Like a pro, well done, mate. That's awesome. Cool. And so now that you've moved him, you'll notice that if you go to the motion blocks, it will have changed the numbers in the go to block for you to set up exactly where the parrot is now. So if we drag one of them in. So on. Cool. So we've got the right X coordinate, which okay, is so our left right. right now. Yeah, well done, dude. That's great. So the X coordinate is right. So we've got it in that minus 200 something number. And then we want to have the Y be different each time. So grab a random block and dump it in there, mate, into your Y coordinate hole. Okay, so I'll go down to operators and it's about the fifth one. You can find a pick random. Then we'll miss anywhere between probably about 1460. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's cool. So that'll mean that he's always in the air, right? He's never going to be flying down at sort of grass level. We're always going to have him somewhere in the air. I have it actually 1480. Awesome. You just the Y section. We yeah, go. wicked. So if you click the green flag now, what will happen is it will generate your flowers and then it will start to move the bird up and down between those ranges. It will just continue to generate that bird over and over and we can check the range we've set. Awesome. There we go. So we can see it moving up and down between its lower and upper Y ranges. So that's pretty much perfect, mate. You've done really well there. Um, and so once we've got him, we want him to move across the screen. So we're going to have him repeat until. So grab one of those. So I think uh, if I go to control, I can find a repeat until block. Perfect. And then we want him to repeat until his X position is all the way to the far side of the screen. So we're going to need another operator. And would it be more than or less than? So it's going to be a greater than because it's going from the left to the right. Your X position is always increasing. So we want it to go up to a certain level, which is somewhere around about 250. And then once it gets to that point, we want it to do something different. We want it to recognize that it's gone too far and it should stop moving to the right hand side. So we want to have repeat until your X position is greater than around about 250. Uh, we're not going to use clones in this one. We're not having anything particularly clone itself except for the flowers that already exist. So there's a question that's come up from Mariam. And um, we're not going to clone anything but the flowers in this project. And if you're starting from the starter project that we put up earlier, the DM Meadow extension, you'll have that cloning already set up for you. Cool. So pop that into your repeat until hole. And then you just want to make sure that your go to X isn't inside that loop, because what's going to happen is if it's inside your loop, it'll get all the way there and then it will continue to go back to the beginning. So we'll put it up into our forever. Perfect. And so now we're going to start our repeat until we want it to make small steps as it goes across the screen. So you're going to use your change X by. Okay. And then you can set whatever number you want in there, Jim. So if you're putting in a smaller number, it's going to do more iterations of the same thing. If you put in a slightly bigger number, it's going to do less iterations. But at the same time, we're going to have it do a few things after that. So once you've got the number of steps you want it to change, we'll pop in its next costume block as well, just so that we can make it look like the parrot's flapping, because he comes with a couple of default costumes. So I can go up to looks, and here I can find the next costume, and I just drag that in underneath the change X by. Awesome. Um, we can already see your birds flapping across the screen, mate. That's wicked. Yeah, I think we need in a small weight. Probably. Yes, mate, we do. Well done. Yeah, bang on. Yeah. So pop one in at the end there. Sort of a fraction of a second there, I reckon. I have zero point one. Oh. oh, that's good. That's much smoother now. Just a little bit of a weight in there can sometimes make it smoother, which is a little counterintuitive sometimes when you're working in Scratch. But having that small weight just can make it a little bit smoother in your animation. That's awesome. So now we've got our bird, and he starts at the left-hand side. He shifts up and down randomly whenever we want him to do that. Uh, and then he moves all the way across our screen until he gets to that point and comes back to the beginning. That's awesome, man. 
Um, do you want to add a sound to your bird? Do you want to have him make a sound when he shows up? Yeah. Sweet, man. So pick a sound you like for the bird. Um, the parrot usually comes with a default sound, but you can add any one that you like. And we'll yeah. put that in just above our repeat until block. So we want it to happen as soon as he comes on the screen, then he'll go across, go back to the beginning, make his sound, go across, go back to the beginning, make his sound, and go across. So any sound you like, bud. So I've gone to choose a sound now. I'm going to go to the animal loots. I think I'll probably go for. I'll go for tropical birds. Nice. Yeah, that's a nice soothing one. I quite like that sound. And I can go back to code and. Uh... I'm going to sound, and now I can find a place sound tropical birds until done. That's him. And then I'd actually make the start sound if I were you, man, because if you haven't played until done, it will play the sound before your bird starts coming through. So if you grab the start sound, it'll kick it off and continue the rest of the script down. So if you grab that and pop it in above where it says repeat until. Cool. There we go. Yeah, perfect. And so now when we look at the, the order of our script, our bird appears, makes his sound, travels across the screen, and then repeats that again. So that's really cool. And so, I mean, we can add a couple more bits to it, man. There's like one or two things extra that you can do with it. So the bird already looks pretty cool. I mean, we could do it if you felt like it. We could do a hide at the bottom and a show at the top of your script there inside the forever loop. And that means when he gets to the end, rather than having part of his backside hanging out, he'll disappear when he hits your point and then reappear on the other side. Um, but that's, you know, it's not necessary. And the other thing we could add if you felt like it was to have him wait a random couple of seconds at the end of his loop. So he'll get to one side and then rather than have him continually stream backwards and forwards like a banner, he'd get to one end, he'd wait a few random seconds that you'd choose and then it would come back through again. So it just randomizes it a little bit more because it's one of those things in the human brain. We recognize randomness as being that sort of natural chaos and it just helps us sort of, you know, deprogram a little bit more. But whether you want to add that or not, man, that's totally up to you. I mean, did you yeah. fancy doing that? Yeah, go for yeah. it, man. So well, I did a show right at the top of my when I receive parrot. And right here at – oh, no, wait. So I'll add this into the forever loop right at the top. Perfect. Awesome, man. Well done. I'll have a hide right at the bottom of the forever loop. Yeah. I'm going to go over to control again. Right at the top, I'm going to grab a weight. And then I can go down to operators. I can get out another pick random block. Uh, there we go. And okay, I've dragged out two, but I'll switch that to something lower like three. I'll put that one back, put this in where the weight is, and now hopefully it should work. Awesome, man. That's wicked. Yeah. Just that little bit of so randomness difference. difference. And then the bird's off. Awesome. All right, yeah. Cool. Okay. That's wicked, man. It sounds really good too. I love oh, that tropical yeah. bird's noise. That's really cool. That's a good choice. Yeah, Sweet. I mean, um, so that's our parrot. Our parrot's off and it's going. We get flowers, we get a parrot, and that's really nice. Right? We've added a little bit to it already. Um, and then the next thing you could add would be like another sort of like, I mean, what else do you get in forests and stuff like that? Like, I mean, when I messed around with it, I added a butterfly. But you could add another animal that you want, anything you like, man. Bees or something. Or... Uh, I'll try to look for a bee, see if they have one of those. So, if not, then I'll just choose probably a butterfly too. Uh, oh, they don't have a bee, they have a beetle, but. So, okay. Butterfly, and I'll choose butterfly too. Cool. That comes with two costumes. Perfect. Yeah, that's what we want. Nice. Nice and simple. Two costumes is great. And the fact that it will look like the costumes that repeat is one down and one up with the wings, that's a really nice animation style that we can yeah. exploit with a single block, right? Like, which is always good. Cool, man. So now that we've got a new sprite, we have to go back to our main script and add one of our other broadcasts so that we can get this guy to kick off when we want our script to sort of um, have him run through. So I'll go back up to events, I'll get our broadcast parrot, but I'll switch the parrot to new message and I'll name it butterfly. Awesome. Great. And then we go back across to a butterfly sprite. And yeah. in the events panel again, I can grab a when I receive butterfly. 
Awesome, man. Well done. That's brilliant. Cool. So again, we want another forever loop on this guy. So once he kicks off, he'll just keep doing it forever until we decide we've had enough of our mindful meadow. You want to go back to the real world? Mindful meadow. So I can go down to the And in the third one, I have a, oh, that's an if then, I want forever. Perfect. There we go. I've now got a forever loop on there. Cool. And so now with this guy, um, depending on what we're about to do with him, we can decide later whether we want to do it or not. But we're going to have him pick some random angles that he flies. So if you have him go to the very far right-hand side of your screen, we'll get this guy to come in from the other way, just again okay. to change it up and make it a little bit different. So I'll move him over here. And this time instead of being a minus X, it looks like it's a positive. Yep. And so we want to have our go to X and then pick random Y again. So you can pop that in. Um, and yeah, so Mariam's asked another question. So the butterfly does look a little goofy. You can edit them. You can paint your own sprites anytime that you want. Um, for ease of like ease of recording today and for brevity, we're just picking the ones that exist. But you can make any sort of sprite you want. You can download any sort of images you like off the internet, uh, and then you can just upload them completely as sprites. You can also upload GIFs, and GIFs will just set each one of them to have a separate costume, which is each frame of your GIF. And we're going to have the color change itself in a little while. So yeah, there you go. So as you see, Jimmy's editing the sprite there. We can change that if we wanted to or make a completely fresh one. That's totally up to you. So we've got our go to X wicked man. Bang a random number in your Y section and we'll have this guy appear at a random height again. Okay, so oh, not just one to ten. So I think probably around um, a bit higher. So about minus 70 to about 40. Perfect, man. Yeah, good. And I like the way you move the sprite to check your heights there, and it shows you the numbers shifting on the underneath the, the stage there. It's clever. Yeah. All right, yeah. so I have a random Y now. I have a random X. And now for movement, we could do, like, random, like, patterns, or we could have it follow the mouse, or... Yeah, man, that's up to you. Which one of those would you like to do? Uh, can we do follow the mouse? Yeah, we totally can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's easy to do. So if you switch over to your code tab... Yeah. And then so inside our forever loop, right, what we want to do is we'll have it uh, underneath that go to X, we'll have another loop, we'll have a repeat until. Okay, so I can go down to control where all the loops are, have a repeat until loop. Yep. And then so again, we're going to take that repeat until so that if you decide you want to let go of the, of the, um, the butterfly, if you don't want him to follow you anymore, you want him to start from the other side again, you can just drag your mouse all the way off that left hand side of the screen. So to do that, we'll grab a less than block in your operators. Yep. Sweet. And then we'll have your X position be less than minus 250. So as soon as your butterfly, you see, if you move your mouse all the way to the left, as soon as your butterfly drags off the left-hand side of the screen, he'll start again from the right. Perfect, man. That's the way. Now I can just drag this into the repeat until block. Yep, that's the one. And then so grab your point at mouse. So point in, so you should have the, the point at the mouse in your motion blocks. So point towards mouse pointer at the mouse. Should I put that into repeat until or? Uh, yeah, inside your repeat until block. That's right, mate. And then much as we did with our um, parrot, we're going to have him move a couple of steps and then flip costume over. Right, so I can have move about 10 steps and then switch up into next costume. Perfect. Let's check it, see if it works. Yep. So after all of these are falling, there you go. Butterfly now follows my mouse. Cool. It was a bit That's fast. But turn that down, but I think it's quite good. That's cool, man. So you can turn him down in a couple of ways. You can have him take less steps, or you can add a weight to that loop if you want, your repeat until loop. If you add like a small weight at the end, he'll sort of go a little bit slower and he'll have um, a bit more of a chance to get away from him and lead him around the screen. So I'll add in another wait for about 0 0.2 seconds this time. Yeah, cool. And now, yeah. movement over there. And when it starts, there we go. Follows the mouse. Awesome, man. That's wicked. And I like the interactivity of that one. So when I did my one, I just had him move a couple of random directions every so often. But I think I prefer your one where he follows the mouse. That's nice because then you can sort of like lead the butterfly through your garden a little bit, which is really sweet. I like that. 
Um, so what we could do too is we could have your butterfly so that if you want him to change color, if you lead him off the left-hand side of the screen, when he comes back on, he'll be a different color palette. Do you want to add that to it? That's a pretty simple thing to do. Yep. So I can go over to looks and I can grab change color effect by. And we want that to be a random number, so we'll do a pick random. Have it anywhere between 1 and 100. Excellent, man. You just read my mind. Pop it underneath uh, that repeat loop. Yeah, yeah or at the top. Yeah. Either way works, man. Either way works. I'll have it underneath. And now, if I leave them off right way to the left, it's upside down, but eventually, we should. There you go. Oh. oh. It's not coming off. That's all right. So we can fix that. What we want to do there. If we can change that number, so when your X position is less than, yeah, make that slightly larger, like minus 240 or minus 230 or, yeah, yeah, wherever you want, mate, it's fine. What about minus 200 and then try again? Yeah, yeah. And we've just had a question from Mustafa coming and asking if we can have the butterfly follow the parrot. We definitely can. Um, if you go yep. to that point towards, you can just tell it to follow the other sprite instead. Um, that's a really simple thing to do. In that little pull-down menu where it says mouse pointer, you always just want it to point towards the parrot sprite, and that should definitely change that. That's easy to fix. All right, and you'll start following the parrot around. So, okay, yeah, he's going towards the parrot now and not the mouse because the mouse right. is underneath it. Awesome, that's cool, man. So if you want to change it back to the mouse, that's awesome. And we'll check to see if we can get him to disappear and come back on with a new color. Yeah. I'll, um, quickly, just lower this. To make it hopefully a tiny bit faster. There we go. Oh, nice. That's much smoother too. And now, that comes back on with a different color. Wicked, man. And we can keep changing that. That's, that's awesome, man. That's so cool. So if you if you want to stop him going upside down, if you go into your motion blocks, you'll see one that says set rotation style. Yep. So if I go, yep, here we go. So make sure his rotation style is left, right. Oh, where is it? Uh... And just slide that into your... Yep. Um, yeah, you can slide that in pretty much anywhere at the top of your script. So it can be above or inside your forever loop. Um, if you put it inside your forever loop, it will consistently check every time. Not that it should change, but if anything does happen, every time your loop comes around, it will make sure that he's the right way up. And then when you test it again. There we go. There go. That's super cool, man. I love that. Chasing off the edge, and he comes back a different color. Amazing. So cool, Jimmy. Really great work, man. Really good. Um, and we can add some sound to him, eh? Should we have him, like, make a butterfly flapping sound? Yep. So Sweet. I'll go into sounds here at the top. I'm going to, like, choose a sound and see if there's, so there's, there's a low whoosh. Which sounds kind of like a bug, like flapping a wing. And then hopefully, yeah, there's a high whoosh. I think I'm going to use the high whoosh probably. Cool. Because over and over again, it sounds like kind of flapping. Sweet. So now I can go into the sound panel down here. And I should be able to find a play sound high whoosh. And I'll just put that in my repeat until. And hopefully, that's a bit fast though. So I'll show you, I'll, I'll give you a tip on this one. So pull that start, pull the start sound out and pop it in the menu. We'll get rid of that one. I've got a cheeky trick to fix that. If you grab a broadcast block and pop it in at the top and then broadcast like flap or wings or noise or any message you want. So slide that in above your forever. Oh. Because we only, we only need it to broadcast once. Watch this. I'm going to do a cheeky thing for you. So that's it up there. And then in the same sprite, once you've made your message, you add a when I receive. Oh, 
So nice. what I received should hopefully be, yep, here we go, in events. Fantastic. And then underneath so that, bang it. Oh, sorry. No, that's cool, man. It's right. It happens, eh? Browser-based coding is often a little laggy. Don't stress it. Underneath that, put in a forever loop and then have your play sound until done. So what it'll do is it'll play the sound in its own loop. It'll continually play the whole sound and then play the whole sound and then play the whole sound and it'll start to sound like a thing flapping. So if you run it now. There we go. Yep, sounds like it's clapping its wings. That's awesome, man. That's super cool. Um, so the only other thing I might say is your butterfly is currently bigger than your parrot. But, you know, who knows? This could be in South America where right. you have those massive plate-sized butterflies. So I've already quartered the butterfly size. Oh, no, that's a bit small. 40, maybe? Uh, right, yeah, 60, that seems good. And cool. hopefully now... Yep, seems good. Oh, so we've just had someone come in, Jimmy, and ask us if we can add a snake or something on the ground. What do you want to pop on the ground, man? Uh, yeah, we can have a beetle or a snake. So let's try and find a snake here. So I'll make a new cost. I'll make a new sprite now. And I'm going to choose a costume. There we go, snake. Awesome. Cool. So we could probably do something really cheeky here and just copy the parrot code and change a few of the variables in it. Yep. Or some so, of the parameters. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The parrot code, I just drag that onto snake. And we'll yep, come back here on parrot and I'll be on snake. That's the one. So the only thing we'd need to change is the broadcast. Although maybe we don't. I mean, it will start when the parrot starts, but. Well, yeah, do you know what I mean? It'll work exactly as the parrot does. The only thing we'd want to change is probably some of the Y values because at the moment we've got an airborne snake, which is terrifying. Yeah. So <laughs> go pick random anywhere between about minus 120 and 11. There we go. Okay. Now, I'll quickly delete this cold up costume because. It's not part of the walking movement, but there we go. Awesome. That's great, man. I love it. That's so cool. I mean, we could add, because at the moment our snake is making a tropical bird sound, isn't it? Ah, uh, yeah, that is, that is a bit of a problem. Um, so I can go back into sounds. I can go to choose sound and try and find something that a snake would make. Nope. Nope. <laughs> All right, uh, it doesn't look like there's any good snake sounds here, so. Have you tried? There's one called Rip that might work. Rip. Yeah, see if you can find a sound effect called Rip. It's not exactly right, but. Yeah, that's good. And then we can pop that inside the loop so that it sort of like goes. There we go. Awesome. So we've had uh, Mariam come in and ask us is that the, the flapping on our butterfly is quite loud. Can we make it less? Yeah, we can do that. If you really want to do that, Mariam, you can. There's a block in there that says set volume to. So inside our loop, if you grab that set volume to and just make it a smaller percentage than 100, Jim. Uh, yeah. Oh. That's it. That's right. that. Awesome, man. Yeah, we just make it a bit quieter. Perfect. Right, there we go. That's wicked, mate. Great work. Now we can choose our flowers. And... Let's <laughs> have a look. Okay. So I reckon what you should do, mate, is let's do the same thing we do with the butterfly loop. 
Okay, so I can go back into here. I can drag that into the snake. I can say, I'll change that to a snake sound. And on the butterfly, where did we have the broadcast? Uh, we had it at the very top above our forever loop. It loads. <laughs> All right, there we go. So come down here, broadcast butterfly, change that to snake sound, then play sound rip, and hopefully that should be better. Yeah, nice. There we go. Now got That's awesome, mate. Well done. That's super cool. That's way better than the one I put together. I love it. It's always better when you collaborate, man. You always get better stuff. That's super cool. All right. Thanks, Jim, man. That was really great. Did you have a good time? Yes. I have to do it again, man. We have to do it again sometime soon. Maybe next week or the week after we get together and do another one. That was really fun. I enjoyed that a lot. Fun. Awesome, man. That's cool. And so for everybody at home, remember, you can get everything that we make, all the projects that we have, all the live streams we do. They're going to be at rpf.io slash home. Uh, you can get all the other projects we've released over the other weeks and you can share your work with us there as well. Right. We'd love to see the things that you make. If you want to if you've watched our stream today and you think made a really great mindful meadow that you'd like to share with us, then send it to us at rpf.io slash home. Share it to us on Twitter and all those other sorts of places because we're streaming all over the place every week. Uh, it's not just on YouTube. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're on Twitch. Uh, and you can get hold of all of our work all of the time. We always want to see the cool stuff that you make. We love having our community share their things with us. So thanks for watching in this week, everybody. Uh, we'll be back again next Wednesday, same time, same channel, uh, 2 p.m. And we'll be broadcasting another project to do with our new theme next week. So if you have any questions, again, you can get hold of us on our socials, uh, on our Twitter particularly. And then, like I say, again, please share your work with us. We love seeing cool stuff coming in from all over the world. So thanks very much, everybody. And we'll see you again next week. Take it easy. Be safe. Bye.